Italian cars, Neapolitan tailoring, and the world's number one business podcaster. We are in Naples, Italy for this episode of The Soup Maker. So I reconnected recently with John Lee Dumas, or JLD, the founder and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire, the number one business podcast in the world, millions of listeners every month. And JLD uh, is currently on a trip around the world, and so he's in a different city every two days. A couple of days ago I talked to him, he was in Brussels, then he was in Amsterdam, then he was in Croatia. I was on JLD's show a couple of years ago, and he reached out looking now for a pair of custom hand-painted sneakers. Luckily for him, we had just made a partnership with an Italian company that makes custom painted sneakers. Now, JLD lives in Puerto Rico, but because he's on a worldwide tour right now, uh, he happens to be in Naples, Italy on the same day as me. So I'm going to meet JLD in Naples, Italy. When you fly a lot, you have to learn a couple of hacks. First of all, get yourself a credit card that has a lounge pass. This lounge pass will let you into the airport lounges all over the world. So you can get some food, you can get some beer, some coffee in the lounge before you fly out. And if you fly first class, you usually get a pass to a much better lounge. Good to see you about it. Yeah, man. Naples has a long-standing tradition of tailoring and a very specific kind of tailoring called Neapolitan tailoring. And so what we're gonna do, because we're here, is we're gonna stop into a tailor shop with Rubinacci Tailors, one of the most famous tailors in Naples, Italy, and learn a little bit about Neapolitan tailoring. present some uh, fixed issue like a uh, short jacket or narrow shoulder or big lapels because it, everything is made according to the customer silhouette mm. and everything is made according to the professionality and the attitude of the customer. So we, we, have, we try to do bespoke inside and outside. <music> ask you something you you run a multi-million dollar business yeah you, how, how many employees you got five so you got five employees in a multi-million dollar business including right? me <laughs> is that is that even like like is was that possible 15 years ago impossible couldn't do it yeah so look you you talk to ceos you are a ceo yeah um but who are you a ceo to i guess i would say that i'm actually a ceo to my audience in a weird way like my okay. audience is fire nation that's why i refer to them and every single episode that i create I'm creating it for them. Like I realize that I'm speaking to them in the situations that they're at in their life. And that's why I want to impact. So it's kind of like this, like as a CEO, I would say, okay, my job is to set the direction of the organization. And how you do that is you influence the culture and you, you try to uh, create a way for people to think in order to reach a certain goal. Yeah. Is that what you do with your audience? Every day. I mean, for me, the culture is everything. So if yeah. I can share what's working for me and my culture. If I can share what's working for you as a guest on my show in your culture, if they can put what's working for me, yeah. then I can definitely um, be impacting them in that massive way. And if they can pull something from you who has a different industry, a different niche, different thought processes, 
then they can pull that from you as well. JLD is truly the world's leading authority on interviewing successful entrepreneurs. He's had Jack Canfield, Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk on his show, and when Tony Robbins needed a platform to get his new book out to millions of entrepreneurs around the world, he went straight to JLD. So I got a question for you. So you've had uh, you've had Tony Robbins on your show. Yes. So he actually reached out to me. No way. And I think that that's something that's really interesting to talk about is the effect of momentum okay. and the effect of just working hard and creating great content. Momentum. Creating... Uh, can we focus on that word? I, I, think, that, I, I think that's something people so need important. to hear. So important. Yeah. So for me, like I didn't start day one and say, okay, I don't have an audience. I don't have any momentum. I don't have like any like really sway in this world right now. I'm not going to go after Tony Robbins. I'm just going to put my head down. I'm going to find great people. I'm going to interview them. I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to build an audience through that. And that's what I did. And so then when Tony Robbins, you know, years down the road, yeah. releases a book called Money, and he wants to get the word out to entrepreneurs about that, he says, well, who's the peop who, who are the people in the world yeah. that have the biggest audience? Who are the people in the world that have the biggest authority, impact, and influence? And my name came up. Huh. And he said, you know, listen, this guy has over a million listens of his podcast every single month. I'm going to be reaching a massive audience by coming on his show and sharing, you know, my story about my my journey and my book, etc. And so his people reached out to me. And by the way, I didn't just say yes, right? Because I had momentum. <laughs> I said, listen, I will do that number one if Tony gives me a 30 second testimonial after mm. video testimonial, so yeah, I can yeah, yeah. use that and leverage that. Yeah. And number two, I want to go to one of his events. So how about a VIP ticket to uh, Date with Destiny, which okay. is a ten thousand dollar ticket? Yeah. And his team said yes and yes. So we're cruising around Naples in a brand new, super shiny Ferrari Portofino. And driving in Naples is absolutely frightening. This city is so gritty and people are cutting in and out of traffic, cutting you off. Everybody's fighting for their space in the lane. It's, uh, it's about as fun and exhilarating as it is truly frightening to drive here. Uh, the, the suit you have, uh but bespoke is a suit you have for your life. I very often wear suits that are 20 years old and they're better and better because they adjust to your moments. They live with you, so they become your more and more. Meanwhile, a ready-made suit after a year or two, you have to throw out because it's not yours, so it's, uh, it's made for somebody else. That's the main issue. So you have clients in Japan? You have clients in uh, Russia. We are, we are quite small because we are not a big company. Uh, we only produce a thousand suits a year. So, uh, but uh, our customer is very uh, different from Japan to America to uh, Kazakhstan to Tanzania. <laughs> Make sure that you're dressed pretty good on flights. You got to be well dressed, and the reason is, uh, especially if you're sitting near the front of the plane, you're going to be sitting around other successful people. And I've gotten a ton of clients just by talking to people sitting next to me on flights. And for that reason, you got to have a couple business cards on you anytime you fly because you don't know who you're going to meet. So nobody cares about your business card today, which is why you got to have a business card that stands out. This business card is a call or stay card, so you can pull these tabs out. Each one has my contact info on it, and these are the stays that go inside your shirt to hold the collar up. What's really interesting about this momentum thing is just your life starts to attract the things that you are. Like my friends now are more CEOs of companies. Did you find that for you as well in your personal life? Absolutely. And it's interesting, um, when I had you on the show, I ended the show this specific way, and I've ended the show this way for about a thousand episodes now. I say, all right, Fire Nation, you've been hanging out with Dimitri and JLD, and you're the average of the five people you spend the right. most time with, yeah. so keep up the heat. So what am I saying every episode now? I'm saying, listen, you're hanging out with a successful CEO, Dimitri, and you're hanging out with myself, you know, a multi-million dollar entrepreneur. So there's two of your five right there. Mm. So you're the average of those five people. You've hung out with two cool people so far through my show, so keep up the heat. Who are those other three people? And I'm a big believer in listening. Like, you only have so much time in this world and how you're gonna actually delegate and allocate that time is gonna be so critical to your success. And so for me, I'm not saying, listen, tell your high school friends you'll talk to them never, <laughs> but tell them to talk to them next month. I mean, they don't have to be in your top five, but they don't have to be like outside of your top 50 either. They can kind of be in that, in that gray area. Mm -hmm. So your top five are people that have to inspire you, motivate you, 
push you forward, get you excited. Say they're gonna meet you in Naples and drive around in a Lamborghini and have some fun shooting a show. I mean, those kind of people that I wanna be hanging out with. Naples is synonymous with cuisine and it's specifically synonymous with pizza and it's even more specifically synonymous with pizza margarita. The pizza margarita is a pizza that features tomatoes, basil, and mozzarella, and there's a very specific reason for it. In 1889, 28 years after Italy was unified, a visit to Naples took place by Queen Margarita of Savoy, wife of King Umberto I. At the time, Chef Raffaele Esposito of the Pizzeria Brandy created a pizza to honor the Queen, and doing so with the colors of the Italian flag. Tomatoes for red, mozzarella for white, and basil for green. The Neapolitan, uh, before, uh, at the time of my father, the fabric were much stiffer, and so yes. you didn't see the wrinkle. But mm. th today, with such soft fabric, it's very, it's very rare that you don't see the handwork for hand stitching here on the lapels and makes those more wrinkled. Handmade stitch gives uh, um, an allowance that more you, comfort. You, yeah, that yeah. You, you cannot get from the machine. Absolutely. So, uh, of course, they have to make it properly because if you have too much wrinkle, it's too much. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So there is uh, just a touch. That you have to show that it's handmade. Next, uh, going through security. This is important. Check it out. We'll be familiar with this fabric. The pants are stretch denim. Why stretch denim? Because they look sophisticated like a business trouser, but they stretch and they feel like a pajama, perfect for flight. So you gotta wear slip-on shoes so that when you're going through security, you don't have to tie and untie your shoelaces. But also notice I'm wearing bamboo socks. The reason you wanna wear bamboo and not cotton is because bamboo doesn't absorb moisture and bamboo stays cool. So when you're on flights, they don't smell, they don't absorb moisture. Bamboo socks for flights are a must. Next, the belt. What you want to have is an adjustable band with a clip-on. So you go like this, and here we go, watch this. And the belt buckle comes right off. And so you can fly without taking off your belt through security. Today, uh, because we're going to Italy, I'm wearing my uh, late 1990s Tonino Lamborghini watch. Now, Tonino Lamborghini, now it shares the name with the car brand Lamborghini and it shares the logo, but this is actually the son of the founder of the Lamborghini car brand, uh, created an accessories brand. So he makes watches, uh, jewelry, some phones and things like that. Now, typically I don't wear cufflinks on my flight because it's another step to take through security. And these are Japanese movement functional clock cufflinks. And if attention to detail is your thing, you can set your watch and your cufflinks to different time zones when you travel. Somebody who we're actually talking about recently, uh, Tim Ferriss, yeah. um, he wrote a book for our work week. <laughs> I actually heard this, this is awesome, yeah. Yeah, but what's interesting about it is he's even disappointed in the title in a lot of ways himself, because he's like, listen, so many people just look at the book and they say, okay, this is how I work four hours a week yeah. and become a successful entrepreneur. He's like, no, this is how you take your 60 hour job and you condense it, condense yeah. it down to four yeah. hours a week with, with systems, with automations, with processes, and then use the other 50, 60 hours a week to do other things to build your business. You know what's interesting? If he called the book the 400 hour work week, it would be a more appropriate title. Much more appropriate. Because he's getting 400 hours of work done in a week. Exactly. But nobody would buy the book because of, because they'd be like, eh, you no, know. People want yeah. it, they want the hammock. Yep. They want the four yep. hour yep. week yep. in there. And, and that was supposed to keep them, but it's so true. I mean, no successful entrepreneur that I've interviewed, and I've interviewed over 2,000 successful entrepreneurs, wouldn't say hard work was a huge part of my success. Every single one of them. That was the major ingredient to their success was the hard work. In the year 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius, possibly the most famous volcano in the world, erupted, and it took with it the city of Pompeii, which has been immortalized in many stories and songs. Naples sits on the outskirts of the ruins of Pompeii, which are pretty well preserved today. One of the more astounding sites in an astounding city of Naples is the Piazza del Plebiscito. It is named after the plebiscite that took place in 1860 that unified the Kingdom of Italy under the House of Savoy. So your father started the business? My father started the business in the 30s. Don't forget that in the 30s, Naples, uh, we had the kings. In Naples, we had something like uh, 4,000 tailor shops. <laughs> 4,000, yeah, yeah. quite a bit for a city like Naples. And now we have uh, no, neither the 10%. Naples used to be full of tailor shops, but that has since died out. The reason that British tailoring has overtaken Neapolitan tailoring has significant historical implications. 
In British tailoring, the suit tradition comes from the military, which is why in British tailoring you see straight lines and no wrinkles and very firm looking, very formal looking outfits, right? Uh, and because it's a military tradition, many suits had to be made at the same time. And so British tailoring evolved into a production pipeline where one person would sew the button, one person would do the lapel, one person does the sleeve, one person works on the trousers. And so you had a person that was highly specialized to one skill. But in Italian tailoring, a master tailor does everything. And to become a master tailor takes 20 to 25 years of hard work. So there are not too many master tailors left in the world today. And that's why British tailoring has grown while Neapolitan tailoring has sadly nearly died out. So let me ask you this. Um, is it easier today uh, for a young person to succeed than it's ever been or is it harder? It's never been easier, and here's why. One of the most important ingredients to success is loving what you do. Because if you love what you do, you're gonna do it, and you're gonna enjoy doing it, and you're gonna put in the extra time, the extra effort, you're gonna have care. And when you have all of those things, your success is gonna come so much easier when that happens. And so in today's world, it's never been easier to choose what it is you're gonna wake up and do all day, every day. Mm. Your grandparents didn't have a choice. They lived in Detroit, let's say. They had to work at the Ford plant. That was the only job that was available to them. They moved to Wisconsin. They had to work in a cheese plant. You know, They had to focus on what was around them. The world they live in today, we choose. And in North America, there's this whole shift toward leftism where people are saying, you know, opportunity is unequal and uh, it's harder to succeed than ever and people are stuck at the bottom. What's wrong with that mentality? Here's what's wrong with the mentality is all those people saying those words, they're entitled. They grew up getting an eighth place trophy for just showing up, a participation trophy. So they never faced rejection until they were 22, 24, 26 years old. You need to grow up facing rejection. Rejection is part of life. Successful entrepreneurs embrace rejection. They use rejection to catapult them to the next idea, to the next success. In the 16th century, a development was built to house the Spanish garrisons, which was used to quench revolts from the Neapolitan population. And this place became known as the Spanish Quarter, or the Quartier Spanoli. It's colorful, it has many narrow streets, excellent street cuisine, but it's also known for its grittiness and high rate of crime. The Spanish Quarter is also where you're going to hear more Neapolitan language being spoken than anywhere else. I knew that I would enjoy having these type of conversations with successful entrepreneurs. I knew that I would enjoy talking to people who had had massive failures, who had overcome those failures, who had had incredible aha moments, who turned those aha moments into successes. I knew I would enjoy those conversations. And I used the vehicle, the platform of a podcast to make those conversations available to the world. I had no passion about podcasting, but guess what? As I got good at that craft, I became passionate about I, podcasting. I right? got into tailoring because I loved the people that bought the suits. And I, you know, I would remember being driven to school or even go to school uh, and see businessmen, you know, and they, and, they, and they were dressed well. And I was like, wow, what did they do? I was so inspired by that. And so I wanted access to successful people. And so for you, it was, your vehicle was podcasting right. and my vehicle was suits, but it was about the people. It was always about, like, I, I get to meet, you know, politicians. I get to meet... Right merger and acquisition folks i get to meet you know people that uh, buy and sell companies professional athletes i want to know about those people right and then over time as i developed a uh, proficiency and expertise in my craft i became very passionate about the vehicle as well but it was always about the people so what's interesting about what you just shared is that when you strip away what you did and what i did it's the same thing it's the same thing it's the same thing yeah it's the exact same thing i tell my clients i think we're all in the same business we're all in the people business you know, and until, until people find that, I think they're going to be uninspired.
gotta go. So, yeah. uh, you wanted them, you got them. Uh, so, a little history. Yeah. yeah man. This is from a, a shoemaker in uh, northern Italy. And there's really only a handful of these cobblers left in the world that still make shoes by hand. And so these are uh, finished by hand and then hand painted. So he has like, a, like an actual paintbrush. And then he sits and paints it by hand. And so this is, uh, in 30 years, they're, you're not going to be able to get this anymore because the skill set to produce things by hand like this is just dying out. Cool? That's so cool. I'll let you. The big reveal. And they smell good because they smell Whoa, like paint. What? That shoe is literally on fire. Entrepreneur on fire. <sighs> yeah, I won't lie, a few of us in the office have been smelling it. <laughs> that does smell pretty freaking cool, hey? It smells really cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. Ooh. Boom, my brother. Are you on fire? I am literally on fire from my yeah, head man. to my toes.